Hey guys, how are you guys doing today? I hope you've had an amazing time having an amazing holiday. Today we are taking a look at Justin Thomas's golf swing, but also at Mike Thomas, Justin's father's golf swing. I hope you guys watched the PNC Championship last week. It featured Tiger Woods playing with his son Charlie Woods, and it also featured the winners Justin and Mike Thomas playing together. Now we're going to take a look at both of their golf swings and then we're going to have a little comparison between the two. Now what's interesting, if you guys don't know this, is that Mike Thomas is a PGA professional, he is a golf coach and he has been coaching Justin for all of his life. He is the only golf coach Justin has ever had and he's done a pretty damn good job of it. So it's really interesting to see these two playing together, but it's even more interesting to take a look at their golf swings because they actually differ quite a lot. Now, Justin and Mike Thomas did win last week, and it was an absolutely amazing event. I highly recommend you guys check out some of the highlights. It was a pretty incredible event. It featured a lot of professional golfers playing with members of family, sons, parents, and it was just overall so much fun to watch. I really did enjoy it and, you know, having Tiger playing with his son for the first time at that event was just incredible. I hope they play in it again future years to come and it would be great to see them win it as well. So let's dive in and firstly let's take a look at Justin Thomas's swing, then we'll take a look at Mike's and now then we'll have a look at the comparison between the two and discuss some of the differences or similarities. So here we've got Justin set up with driver. This is only from a few weeks ago so it is a super super recent clip and it is also a very good clip actually as well, super slow motion. And obviously we know Justin has this huge, huge wide takeaway. We love to see that one piece takeaway starts to hinge up now as he takes it to the top. And if we pause it at the top, there's a few things to talk about. Justin's hands are well above his shoulder plane. His right elbow is away from his body. This basically helps him create width, get a bit more power in his golf swing as well. And throughout his golf swing, he does maintain that width really, really well. He's also using the lower body really effectively here. He's loaded back into that right side. And as we start to swing down, we're going to see he rotates really hard with those hips and shoulders, that right foot kicks up off the floor, the arms get super, super deep, that right elbow now has a really good connection to the body as he starts to come down into impact, the hands and arms dropping back into the slot as he rotates and comes into the golf ball. If we pause it at impact, that's just a great impact position. I mean, if you really wanted to be critical, you could maybe talk a little bit about the feet in the lower body. The feet aren't particularly grounded, that right heel's very high up off the floor. But it's also important to note that Justin is a small guy and he tries to create as much power as he can in his golf swing. And he does this really well by using the ground exploding up off the floor. It's going to enable him to create more power, but at times it might not be quite as accurate, you could kind of lose control if that lower body is not quite so grounded, so bear that in mind. And as he swings through to the finish, beautiful balance finish, lots of rotation, it's a very athletic golf swing. And yeah, that's we've talked about Justin's swing before, he has a, an amazing swing, I know loads and loads of you guys love it. I personally really like it as well, I think there's some really good things in there. Um, it's not necessarily a swing I would copy every aspect from, but you could definitely pick and choose some few key elements that you could never really go wrong from copying that swing. So now let's take a look at Mike Thomas's golf swing. This was the first time I had personally ever seen it. 
Uh, so it was really, really interesting to me, and it actually really, really surprised me, Mike Swing, exactly how it is, because it is very different to Justin Thomas's golf swing. And that's unusual, mostly because Mike has been Justin's golf coach all of his life, so you would kind of in some ways think he would try and be doing the things that he's coaching, but obviously Justin is a lot younger, a lot more athletic, you know, Mike's, I don't exactly know how old he is, but obviously he's going to be quite a bit up, a bit more up there in age. But he does have a really good golf swing, and it actually reminds me of another PJ Tour player, which I'll mention in a little bit. So, we've got Mike here at setup. Uh, he is quite rounded in the upper back and shoulders. Um, don't really know why that is, but, you know, some players like that, they feel a bit more relaxed. But, yeah, he is just is a bit more rounded in the upper back and shoulders. Not quite so over the ball either, a little bit more upright. As he takes the club away, really low wide takeaway, love that. There's not too much different from there with Justin other than just his spine angle is a bit more upright. But here's where it starts to differ. He has quite a narrow golf swing. You can see now as he starts to get to the top and we pause it at the top, that right elbow is super, super tucked into the body and very, very bent as well. So, what does that actually mean? Well, it's going to enable him to create some easy power. It's a good kind of easy power move um, to create, especially maybe for someone a little bit older who doesn't maybe have the athleticism, the mobility to get that huge wide big rotation of the shoulders and hips. So it does enable you to create more power as you're creating another lever in the golf swing that you can kind of release through impact. Uh, he doesn't actually have too much wrist set. Um, pretty much looks about 90 degrees from here, maybe even a little bit less. So that's kind of good to see. But another thing, he has those arms well, well below the shoulder plane and much more connected to his body. His arms throughout his golf swing remain more connected uh, to his body. Well, especially at the top of the backswing, his arms remain more connected to his body. And this is important to understand and to remember when we start to talk about some of the differences between Justin and Mike's swings after this. So as he starts to swing down, he's gonna rotate the body, arms stay connected, but he starts to release them quite a bit earlier and not as much rotation. If we pause the impact, he's definitely more upright. There's not as much rotation. He's releasing the hands and arms through the ball. And it also looks like his weight, if we bear in mind where Justin's weight was with his feet being that right foot quite up in the air, Mike Thomas is very, very different to that. He has both feet pretty much stay planted on the ground, and it looks like he actually keeps his weight quite a bit further back in the golf swing. So, coming through to the finish, he releases that club. Looks like he hits a nice big high draw, nice balanced finish there. So, now let's talk about the differences between Justin and Mike's swings, and let's get them back to back and play them together. So, there's some very key differences I want to draw your attention to. Let's slowly play these to the top of the backswing. And if we pause it at the top of the backswing of both these guys, you can notice that is a pretty different position. Firstly, let's look at the right arm. Justin's right elbow, way away from his body, and his right arm is at about a 90 degree angle, so it's nowhere near as bent as Mike's is. Mike's is tucked into the body, connected to the body, and very, very uh, hinged at the elbow. So it means the swing's not going to be as wide. Justin is using his athleticism, his big, huge shoulder turn, and keeping that huge, wide swing 
Mike is more keeping the arms connected to the body and then he's going to use that extra lever he's created with hinging that right elbow and release that into the downswing. Now another thing let's just mention at this point of the top of the backswing is how high Justin's hands are. They are way above his shoulder plane. Mike's obviously are way below. This is also to do with that keeping more connection with the arms and the body. Now this is something that I know a lot of coaches are leaning towards are players getting their hands and arms a little bit lower. This creates a slightly more consistent kind of swing arc and club path and enables players to use the bigger muscles of the body, the legs, the back and their rotation to hit the golf ball instead of relying on kind of arms and release of the hands. And that's something really interesting that Justin swings like this and Mike swings very, very differently. Now, as we start to take it down into the ball, if we pause it at impact, that's a very, very different impact position right there. Funnily enough, at this point, I would say Justin's arms are more connected to his body than Mike's. Mike has released the arms and kind of angles he created within there to generate that power, whereas Justin has actually rotated more uh, onto the golf ball. And also if we look, Justin's weight is far more on that front left foot than Mike's is. Mike has almost the entirety of his feet planted on the ground and kind of hanging back so that he can really hit up on the golf ball and release those hands and arms. And as we swing through to the finish, Justin, very iconic Justin Thomas finish there. And Mike, a little bit more different. We can even see at the finish, really, that actually Mike still has a bit more of his weight on that back foot than Justin does. But it's a pretty interesting comparison. What strikes me the most there is that Mike has obviously created Justin's golf swing around him. Now, what I mean by that is Mike knows that if he tried to swing like Justin, it probably isn't going to work very well because, as we just mentioned, he's a bit older, he maybe doesn't have the range of movement, doesn't have the athleticism, he isn't going to be able to generate power in the same ways as Justin does. And this is something that's really good to bear in mind for you when you're focusing on your golf swing you have to actually really think you know what am i am i a 13 14 year old athletic kid who you know can be molded into a very athletic player who can build strength and you know create that kind of golf swing or am i someone who's a little bit more up there in age maybe retired and playing golf and realistically, you're gonna have to generate power in other ways, and there's no shame in that. I mean, we just seen the coach of one of the best players in the world, who's a PGA professional, has a very different golf swing. He doesn't go out there trying to swing like Dustin Johnson or Tiger Woods, or even his son, Justin Thomas. He's created his own golf swing, which he knows he can create power and consistency from more than he would be able to from a swing like Justin's and actually which isn't going to injure him and he can actually enjoy playing golf with. So that's something that's really interesting to bear in mind. Let me know what you guys think of these two swings. Comment your thoughts down below. I'd love to know what you guys think of them, what you do you like Justin's swing? Do you like Mike's swing? Which one do you think would work better for you? Remember to give this video a like. It really helps me out. And of course, subscribe to my channel. And as always, guys, I'll see you next time. If I don't see you again before Christmas, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. And remember, as always, guys, grip it and rip it.